Korea dynasty is immediately after unified Silla and Bale period. So Korea dynasty is from the 10th century to 14th. Um, so according to the historical record, they had a lavish um, aristocratic culture in general, uh, but we don't have any surviving clothes per se. If we go to the end of Korea dynasty, we have some colorful th silk threads um, dated to Korea dynasty, 14th century, but we don't have actual silk garment, but we have painting. This painting is painted on silk. So when was this silk made? Of the Korea dynasty, early 14th century. So it's a Korea dynasty silk. And the painting itself shows a beautifully dressed Buddhist deity called Avalokiteshvara. And this is a man, aristocratic man. But uh, here, what you are seeing um, as a dress for Avalokiteshvara is this diaphanous, almost transparent veil. Do you see the veil? It covers from the head to toe, uh, but it's not just transparent. It has, it's a transparent, but it has that golden, like a pattern, like a, you know, the pet textile, and you have rounder roundels as a pattern uh, of this textile right and then you can see this underneath you have this red pants uh, again the loose uh, wide leg the pants and the pattern is um, hexagon do you see the hexagon like a hexagon motif continuous all the way uh, sometimes you have like a green decoration added on, but hexagon motifs are woven all the way through the pant. So this is more like a woven together, not as uh, silk, um, silk screened or stenciled. It's wo you know, uh, woven patterns together. So it shows a high level of textile production, but it matches written records. So what is important is um, the pictorial examples should match written descriptions in history. Then we can say for sure that oh, it, it, that it actually shows um, that contemporaneous textiles of the period of the 14th century. Uh, so these are the hexagon shaped uh, you know, patterns all over. And then you have a little bit larger, or uh, you know, like a palmet motif decorations. And these are the roundels. Uh, rounders meaning just metal, medallion type of decorations all over. Uh, and this is another example. So this particular Buddhist deity is also from the early 14th century. So Korea dynasty silk. And this kind of pattern also shows that you see the palmet motif? It's more like a teardrop or pear-shaped motif, but if you go inside, it's usually a uh, plant. And sometimes you have an animal, sometimes not, but it's woven together. And you can see the green textile uh, with uh, medallion or roundel patterns all the way. And then uh, the hems. Hems are uh, patched with the different types of silk, right? This one is more like a, a birds, right? Or you know, this horizontal motif, you know, throughout. These are cloud. Uh, so the, it has a lining of it too. Um, so those kind of details. Um, so um, I didn't bring it, but um, when we go to study Chinese textile, these, these style, like a, it's a palmet or pear shape, and then uh, plants inside. It's very common uh, motif from the uh, 8th century Tang Dynasty to uh, from 8th century to Mongol period to 13th century. So very popular international pattern throughout the Silk Road. And then if you go to Italy in the 15th century, 
um, you are going to see uh, similar patterns used for Italian, let's say, merchants like the Medici's or Italian princesses or French royal families. Uh, so it's international textile, international patterns that was popular. Uh, one thing that I want to demonstrate, oh, you may wonder then why Professor does not talk about the silk over here. So these are silk, most likely from the, not from the same period. It's much later, like uh, 18th or even 19th century. Uh, the opaque like, uh, area, like uh, here, these are the original Korea dynasty painting. But the other silk that you see over here, these are silk mounting. Uh, of a later period. Um, so, it, you know, these are not the exact 13th century ones. Uh, so, the, you know, the, the popularity of that medallion pattern, like, a, you know, it, it just the, you know, circle medallion was popular from the 8th century. But then if you come to the 13th century, it becomes a little bit elongated. So it's almost like a either over or like a pear shape, it's, around, it's short and round, and it becomes a little bit wider at the end, uh, or it, it becomes a little bit more diamond if you go to Italy. Um, so that's like a 13th century coming down, 13th and 14th, and then the 15th century. And uh, this diamond pattern on like a jacquard or brocade, we still see this. Where do you see this? Uh, like upholstery, like a sofa covers, or if you go to place like a Metropolitan Museum, right? And then if you go to their wall, like a silk wall textile, like a wallpaper, but you, it's not really paper, like a, a wall decorating silk, a lot of the patterns are like this diamond shaped vegetation motif inside. So uh, it is the international, uh, textile trade along the Silk Road from the 8th century through all the way to the 15th and 16th century. So I want to show you one example of this international textile trade. Um, so this is a Simone Martini, an Italian painter's painting called Annunciation, 14th century. Do I have the bigger one? Yes. You've seen this Annunciation, right? Angel Gabriel announcing the Virgin Mary that Oh, be the mother of the God, right? Right here, the world is coming out. Um, so this one shows the beautiful uh, silk textiles of the time, but look at this golden color of Angel Gabriel, all over uh, golden color. But you can see that there is like a tiny patterns. Uh, it actually floral motif all over. So it's not embroidered. It's not, uh, how, how can it, printed. It must be woven together. So the floral motif woven together with the lighter, like ivory color silk, that is what you, what you see as a textile fragment at the Metropolitan Museum. And that is dated from 13 to 14, about the same period. And this was made in Central Asia. And then it was uh, traded along the Silk Road. And we can imagine some of the similar textiles eventually ended up in Florence, Siena, uh, Northern Italy. And then um, wealthy people were making clothes out of this silk fabric. So it, it was woven with metallic lampas. And the metallic thread is what our cultural fellows was explaining you know, you know about uh, the Indian uh, metal, met, metallic thread as well. So you have silk thread, but it's not as thick as this, very thin filament. And then you are going to cover it with uh, gold coil, very thin gold coil. Then the thread, gold thread is used to weave together, then they create these patterns how intricate that is. So Korea Dynasty on, we have some material evidence to attest for the luxurious fabrics of this period. 